Good afternoon. My name is Naomi Hansen. I'm the Vet Director at North Coast Vet Emergency and Critical Care. And this afternoon we're going to talk about pneumonia. Um, pneumonia by definition is an infection in the lung. And it's something that especially, it's funny, this time we're all COVID aware. Um, everybody's worried about lungs, ventilation, all those kinds of things. Um, pneumonia is something we see quite commonly in dogs. Um, less commonly in cats, but quite commonly in dogs, and especially um, young dogs, especially brachycephalic breeds. Um, by brachycephalic, I'm referring to French Bulldogs, um, Bulldogs, um, Cavalier King Charles Spaniels, anything that's got like a squashed up face. Um, we see to see an over-representation over of these breeds when we're talking about pneumonia. Um, so, I mean, the question is, how do the lungs get an infection? In animals, the most likely cause of pneumonia is what we would call an aspiration pneumonia, um, which means that foreign material has been aspirated into the lungs. Um, and usually it's secondary to an episode of vomiting secondary to an episode of regurgitation, um, secondary to a drowning or being underwater for an extended period of time. And what happens in these situations is in secondary to an episode of vomiting, you'll see that the gastric fluid and some of the food actually gets inhaled back into the lungs. Um, in the cases of drowning, um, it's either salt water or fresh water that gets inhaled back into the lungs. Um, regurgitation, similarly, sometimes we'll just see fluid that's been regurgitated, in, uh, aspirated into the lungs. Um, so it's something that all of these things will cause foreign material and bacteria to go into the lung field. So the lungs are very delicate. It's, it's essentially a myriad of little tubes and little air sacs at the end. And what happens when a patient gets pneumonia is that they get fluid into these little air sacs and sometimes infection, and it stops the air going in there. So effectively what that does is it causes breathing difficulties because the body's designed to function with a certain amount of oxygen in the blood. And if the oxygen can't get from the air into the lungs, into the bloodstream, the body starts to breathe heavier and then the circulation system has, it struggles a little bit. So what do we do about these patients that have developed pneumonia? I think the first thing is starting a course of antibiotics because more often than not, there's a bacterial component to it and that's why it's basically called pneumonia because it involves infection more than just inflammation. So we would start a course of antibiotics. Because we know these patients are having trouble breathing, um, what we can do is use a machine called a pulse oximeter to measure their oxygen saturation. And that effectively measures the amount of oxygen in their bloodstream. If the amount of oxygen in their bloodstream is low or lower than what we would like or lower than what we would expect, what we can do is put our patients onto oxygen support. And some, sometimes this involves putting little nasal prongs in their nose um, and putting them onto an oxygen line. So what this does is it super saturates the oxygen that they're, they're breathing in. So it means that more oxygen can cross into their bloodstream. So it helps with any, um, we call it hypoxia or low oxygen in the bloodstream. Um, sometimes patients with pneumonia need to be on oxygen for a period of, 24, 48, sometimes up to 72 hours, depending how bad it is. Um, some patients will respond quite quickly and quite well to the oxygen. Um, some, it takes a little bit longer. And I think for the majority of patients, it does mean that they do need to be in hospital for a period of time. We usually also support our patients with fluids when they have pneumonia um, and try and put them on intravenous antibiotics. The best case scenario is that um, your the pets we have in hospital on nasal oxygen respond quite well and need a little bit of support, some fluids and some antibiotics. Um, with COVID, you've probably heard of the worst case scenario, um, are those patients that really struggle to breathe and need to be put on a vent an artificial respirator or a ventilator. Um, it's something that we do have access to, but we try and 
minimise its use because we know that patients with pneumonia have damaged lungs already. Um, more recently, we've um, purchased a high flow nasal oxygen machine, which is very exciting for me, um, for our patients of the future, because now we have access to something that's slightly better than just nasal oxygen and not as intensive as ventilation. Um, and what high flow nasal oxygen does is it actually supplies the patients with some warm, humidified oxygen that's at a higher flow rate. So it actually means that the more of it will get into the bloodstream through the lungs, even though the lungs are a little bit damaged. Um, but aspiration pneumonia can be a emergency um, and it can happen at any time. And I think we all know about salt water and salt water drownings. And sometimes we see patients that have been at the beach and they've been swimming to catch a ball. And when they're swimming back in, their mouth's been open and all the salt water's gone into their lungs. We've seen quite a few cases of that. So be careful if you take your dog to the beach when they're swimming um, because the salt water um, contains salt. And what we know about salt is it draws water with it. So if you get an amount of salt water in the lungs, we know that there's going to be water drawn in there to make, and it will potentially get worse before it gets better. Plus there's always like bacteria and salt water. So the other kinds of aspiration that we see with a lot of the brachycephalic breeds is secondary to regurgitation or secondary to vomiting. And the signs typically for that are, you'll see your pet like vomit or regurgitate. It may be only once or it may be a couple of times. And then they may sit there and have trouble breathing. So they may take deep breaths and they may have an exaggerated breathing pattern. I think the, the only piece of advice I have is that if you're ever worried about your pet's breathing or breathing pattern, um, take them to a veterinary clinic. Um, if your local vet is open, call in there if not call in an emergency center. Um, the best way to diagnose pneumonia is with chest x-rays um, or ultrasound of the chest. Um, that's quite good at identifying patches of pneumonia in the lung. Um, for the more severe cases, we do do CT scans in the lungs to identify how bad the pneumonia is. Um, and it's something that it can be managed, but a lot of these patients can be quite critical as well. So if you're worried about your pet's breathing or think that they may have inhaled fluid or food or something that they shouldn't have, um, best plan of attack is get them checked by a vet. Um, your vet will probably want to do some x-rays to definitively diagnose whether or not there is changes in the lung pathology. Um, and then it may be that they need to be in hospital a couple of days just on some support, some antibiotics and some oxygen. If your patient is diagnosed with um, pneumonia and then discharged home after they've had a couple of days in hospital, I think the most important thing is to keep them quiet. Um, it may seem like common sense, but treat them as if you would be treating yourself if you had a lung infection. It can take like four to six weeks to actually get better. And even though they're feeling a lot better, don't take them for runs because they'll just get tired really easily and it's not in their best interest.